I always get, whenever I chair this event, I always get overrun with emotion. I kind of lose my trend of thought. Okay, what's next? Okay, what's next is actually very important. Um, very important, very important. Uh, we have some words from President Michael D. Higgins, who has uh, um, written a letter for us. And this is going to be read to us by Michael Gaffey. And just to um, introduce Michael Gaffey, who's actually going to be part of our panel as well. Michael Gaffey is the current Director General of Development Co Corporation and Africa Division of Irish Aid, uh, the, the DCAD. And before his appointment to DCAD, he was the permanent representative of Ireland to the United Nations in Geneva, following terms as Director General for Development, Middle East Director, Director for the Western Balkans and Southeast Europe. And his previous postings with the Department of Foreign Affairs was in Tokyo, London, Cairo, Amman, Baghdad, Belfast, and Chicago. Okay, so he's very well traveled. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, but but I think it's important because and it saves me from doing it again for a panel. So if you can come up and share the words from President Michael D. Higgins. All I'm doing is reading them, so these are, you didn't know, need to know where I was 20 years ago. But this is from the President, and this is very important because the President is, is a champion of this work. So, the President. It is 40 years since the first cases of HIV were diagnosed, and while it may be troubling to recall the moral and ethical atmosphere of society at that time, 40 years ago, it is necessary to give testimony to those who lived through the HIV and AIDS experience of that time. Those who suffered the most in the 1980s were those exposed not only to a prejudice born of misunderstanding of HIV and AIDS, but also to other forms of social oppression which were and are too often manifested in our society. Our recent battle with the COVID-19 pandemic, along with multiple concurrent global crises, including the return of extreme hunger and famine in the Horn of Africa and the illegal invasion of Ukraine by Russia, have the consequence of pushing the fight against HIV AIDS further down the international agenda. It is essential that we keep the battle against HIV and AIDS on the agenda in line with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal target of ending the disease by 2030. As we look back over the past four decades, it is clear that in terms of living up to its duties to its citizens, the institutional and societal response in many countries was anything but adequate in those early years of HIV and AIDS. Great strides have been made thanks to the efforts of those campaigners and of campaigning organizations, activism often conducted in the face of ignorance and sometimes hostility. May I take this opportunity to acknowledge and pay tribute to those activists as well as the researchers working at the frontiers of science for their endeavors in this most important area of public health policy. However, there remain many parts of the world where HIV AIDS remains stigmatized, where a sense of shame is attached to having the illness, where access to treatment is poor. It is truly sobering to recall that over 40 million people have died from AIDS-related illnesses since the beginning of the epidemic and that 650,000 people died of such illnesses in 2021. While this represents a 52% decrease from 1.4 million in 2010 and a 68% decrease from the peak of 2 million in 2004, these 650,000 people have, for the most part, suffered a preventable death, lives cut tragically short, Sub-Saharan Africa, home to two-thirds of all people living with HIV globally, remains the hardest hit region in the world. At a global level, there is much which needs to be done and approached with urgency. Access to treatment remains the core challenge, as only approximately half of those with HIV have access to antiretroviral drugs, which have enabled those living with the virus to live a normal lifespan. Nothing less than universal health coverage and access to quality health care, including universal access to sexual and reproductive health care services, are necessary if there is to be a possibility of meeting our goal of eliminating the disease by 2030. Now is the time to look forward to all that which must still be achieved, both in our own society in Ireland and in countries around the world, to realise the possibility of an AIDS-free generation 
and to ensure that those living with HIV may be able to live their lives without stigma, fear or discrimination. We are also required to create the consciousness for more inclusive and just societies. Let us come together on World AIDS Day to deliver a response which eliminates inequalities based on gender, sexuality and race. One which raises the dignity of all people and meets the demands of social justice. One which will be truly capable of eliminating HIV AIDS and ensuring that those who live with HIV can live lives free of stigma, prejudice and discrimination. Ber Banacht, Michael D. Higgins, Uchtaran Heron, President of Ireland. Thank you, Michael, for sharing those words from President Michael D. Higgins. Just so proud, isn't it, when you hear Michael D. speaking? Just, <sighs> okay. 